Hey guys, today I'm going to be installing a PFSense uh, 242 from this USB key to this Dell Optiplex Micro PC. Now this only has one port, so we're going to use this uh, Cisco SG200 A port and we're going to configure using VLANs to use port 8 as the WAN port, port 1 as the trunking port. The rest of the ports will remain unconfigured but will act like a normal switch. I will also reset the switch just to show you the uh, full configuration that I do. There's nothing that I'm hiding here. Everything I'll, I'll show you from step one to the final setup how I do this. It's very simple but I've seen others try to do a write up of this or explanation in forums and it seems to complicate things more than anything else. So I thought I'd do a, a short video, hopefully, of uh, installing PFSense and configuring a switch to do this. I know a lot of you have uh, single port PCs that you're thinking of using it, but you end up not using it because these instructions seem all complex to do VLAN. So I'm gonna do my best to have a, a short install. Okay, let's start. I'll be uh, inserting the uh, USB key into one of these USB ports. This is version 242. And uh, I'll be booting off it using the uh, boot selection of the uh, PC. So I'm hitting F12 to select the uh, boot devices. And I will be selecting USB storage device. And I'm just gonna let it go through the uh, default uh, boot up. So for the first part, we really don't need any network cables connected to this. So that's why I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible. We will connect the uh, switch and other cables afterwards. So we're gonna accept the defaults. And we're going to install PFSense. Again, defaults. So this installs pretty quick. Uh, within a couple of minutes, we'll have a full install on this. And no, we don't need any additional configuration. And we're going to reboot. I'm gonna remove the uh, USB key. Okay. And I'm letting the system boot on its own now. I'm not selecting any boot devices at all. All right, so this is one of the uh, very few cases where you should actually set up VLANs now. So I'm gonna select yes. And we're gonna select RE0 for our parent interface. And we're gonna use uh, VLAN number 10 for our tagging. And we're done with the uh, VLAN part. Now we're going to assign RE0.10 for the WAN interface. And 
And we're gonna set up RE0 for the LAN interface. And that's all we need to do in this first part of the configuration. So I'm gonna answer yes to this. All right, we can see now that everything looks the way we want it to. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is plug in my notebook into the uh, PC itself and just go through the setup wizard. Okay, let's type in the default IP address for the router. And if we hit advance here, we can proceed. It's not safe, but we actually know it's safe. So admin, the default uh, username, PF stands for the default password. And we're just gonna click through all this. Uh, I'm just gonna select the uh, Google DNS. And we're gonna click here to go to the uh, web configurator. We're gonna accept this. So we can see right here that uh, in terms of PFSense uh, is concerned, uh, we have two interfaces. And so I'm able to log in through the uh, LAN port. And I'm gonna go under interfaces here and uh, show you exactly what happened uh, during the initial configuration. So if we go under VLANs, this is what it created for us. So we can do the same thing coming here, but doing it through the uh, console interface is a lot easier. All right, so let's go and uh, we can see that it detects everything. If we go into system, advanced, and go into uh, miscellaneous, we can change the thermal sensors here to Intel and also select the AESNI CPU based acceleration. And when we do that, we can see that it shows here that the AESNI is active now. And also we get the uh, temperature reading for the CPU. But let's go ahead and add uh, the thermal sensors here. So that gives us a little more information. We're gonna close this down. And let's add the, uh, let's add the uh, traffic graphs applet. All right, so I, Everything looks good. What I'm gonna do next is uh, plug in the switch. But before I do that, I'm gonna reset it. So I plugged it in and right here, there's a pinhole you can uh, put a paper clip and just hold it down. 
And you're gonna see all the lights flash, which means it's, uh, it's gonna reset to defaults. When it resets, you're going to see all the LEDs flash. There we go. All right, so that's reset now. I'm gonna plug in port one, which is gonna be our trunking port. to the uh, PC port here. And I'm gonna plug my notebook into port two. And what we're gonna do is configure port number eight for our WAN port. So if we go into uh, status and DHCP leases, we just see the uh, IP address of my PC, my notebook, and the IP address of the switch. So we can see uh, my PC right now. Let's do a refresh. And there we go, there's the uh, switch. So what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna open up a separate browser, and we're gonna log in with uh, Internet Explorer into the switch. And the default login for this, which is Cisco for the username and Cisco for the password. Now I'm using Internet Explorer because setting the initial password doesn't work with Chrome. Okay, I'm going to switch to Chrome now and see if uh, we can configure everything else through there. All right, so the uh, first place we're gonna go to is the uh, VLAN management. And we're going to add, so let's expand this up a bit. And we're gonna use 10. And that's what we've set uh, with the initial PFSense configuration, that we were gonna use a VLAN ID number 10. Okay, so that's all we have to do there. We're going to move into the end, next section here, interface settings. And for number eight, we're going to edit and we're going to make this our access port. All right, next we go to port to VLAN. And we're gonna uncheck this here. And we're gonna switch this to 10 here. And we're gonna check it. Now we're gonna move over to the uh, port VLAN membership. And we're gonna modify Port one, hit edit. And we're gonna select this, select membership and move it over and now hit apply. And now we're gonna close this and we're gonna refresh the screen here. And this is what we want. So as long as uh, 
This is indicated here, everything is correct. And that's all we need to do on this switch. So what I'm gonna do now is hit save to make sure our configuration is saved. And I'm gonna hit apply. I'm gonna flip back to the uh, PF Sense configuration here and go back to the main status screen. And I'm gonna plug in our WAN cable now. So you should see this right here change as I'm doing it. So this is our WAN cable and I'm gonna plug it into port number eight. And there we go, you can see that the uh, WAN interface got an IP address. So th this shows us that everything is working okay. So I'm gonna open up another tab here. And just go to some random tech news site. And we can see that everything is uh, Working okay. I'm gonna disable the wireless off my uh, my notebook just to make sure that everything is working. And we can see I'm now only connected through the uh, LAN interface. Let's pick something here. And everything is still working. If we go back, we can see that the LAN and the WAN interface are showing us traffic here. So that's it. Uh, this is where I'm going to end up uh, this video. Um, I know it's not much, but it's it's a short intro that shows you how to do this with a, a VLAN capable switch.